Shalom, and welcome to Christians with Torah, the Beit Tehillah Community Podcast. We believe the Torah is relevant for our lives today, God's teachings and instructions. You may very well be part of the first generation to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and have the Torah, a Christian with Torah. Join us as we honor the living God through the study of His Word, topical conversations, and interviews with special guests. Please welcome our hosts, Pastor Nick Plummer and Ryan Cabrera. Shalom, everybody, and welcome to Christians with Torah, the Beit Tehila Community Podcast. I'm your co-host, Ryan Cabrera, and I'm here in Studio B with Pastor Nick Plummer. Glad, glad to be here. It is it is a great in day. the summer months. You know, we uh, it's true, we are in the three weeks of affliction presently. Um, the three weeks of affliction, for those of you that think that sounds terrible, uh, which I guess it kind of is, is the uh, three weeks in between Tamu 17, which commemorates the uh, golden calf incident at the base of Mount Sinai. Yeah. Right? And the 9th of Av, right. which is uh, a historical date where many bad things have happened to the Jewish people. Both temples destroyed. Right. The Inquisition. Yes. Lo- I mean, there's a, a laundry list of things, including somewhere in there, uh, the 10 spies. Uh, yeah. Right. Bad report. Gave a bad report. So there's a lot of, lot of things that have happened. Um, but not to mention, we also think about the summer months as a whole. And we see that from, uh, from the beginning or from Shavuot to Yom Teruah or Rosh Hashanah, there's nothing really going on. Right, and what does it say? Idle hands or the devil's Teshuvah. workmanship, and so we really have so to to stay to. locked and cocked in spiritual exercises and all that stuff. So I just want to encourage everybody that if you're feeling like, man, it's a little weird out there, a little crazy. It's <laughs> the summer months; people get squirrely. Um, people have nothing to do, so they, you're looking for trouble and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, they've the actually course. passed the. Uh, it was the Torah portion when Moses was on top of the mountain getting the commandments, the golden calf incident. Yeah. It was that particular Torah portion when the uh, Supreme Court passed the Same-Sex Marriage Act. So, and then, of course, we got four days into summer. Yeah, we have the reversal of Roe versus Wade. Yeah, which well, is I was going to mention good thing. to you that uh, th- every summer is when the Supreme Court releases their opinions. So, what happens is they're doing their opinions and ar- doing their arguments That's and all true, that yeah. stuff. So, the summer is when they release everything. So they released the Kraken. (laughs) (laughs) They sure did. And and so uh, usually they have like a big meeting and stuff, but nowadays they just like post it online. It's like, oh, here's our decision. And then the media just, you know, goes ham on it it one way or the other. So anyways, praise God. If you're new to uh, listening to Christians with Torah, we're just that. We are Christians with Torah. We believe in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. We believe he's the Messiah, the Son of God. He is God. Um, We believe that the Torah is relevant for today, that the whole Bible is relevant from Genesis all the way to the maps in the back. The maps can be a great resource, right? But That's you get good. the point. Genesis to Revelation, the Word of God, That's it. all relevant to believers today. And so, for the past four years, the past four seasons, we have done the weekly tour portions, week in and week out, plus some interviews and all cool stuff like that with cool guests. So, if you're here for Torah study, I would encourage you to go look at seasons one through four. Yeah. Whatever tour portion you're looking for, we've got at least four episodes on I know. It, right? That's pretty good. It is. So I encourage you to do that. Um, I'm very thankful that God has given us uh, that gift of, of longevity of doing this. And then um, this year we decided to do the book of Matthew, and we are already in the book, or in chapter 16. Yeah. And we're only going to do 12 verses today. We're in Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. And look, we're not live broadcasting, but the calls are already That's it. coming in. I just got to do this. <laughs> Praise God. There we go. Perfect. So, Sil- silent on. So Matthew chapter 16, 1 through 12. All right. If you want to read uh, verses 1 through 4, it's called Understanding the Times is mm-hmm. the title. All right. So I'm going to do uh, the New King James Version. You got it. Verses 1 through 4. Uh, it says here, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Wow, so... uh 
understanding the times, a sign from heaven. Uh, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. So here's uh, two different factions of people. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were Jewish religious leaders of two different parties, and their views were diametrically opposed on many issues. The Pharisees carefully followed their religious rules and traditions, believing that this was the way to God. They also believed in the authority of all Scripture and in the resurrection of the dead. So what you're saying is yeah. this would be like Democrats and Republicans ganging yeah, up on somebody. There's something going on here, that different factions. But the Sadducees accepted only the book of Moses as Scripture and did not believe in life after death. In Jesus, however, these two groups had a common enemy, and they joined forces to try to kill him. Oh. You know, remember, enemies never stay together. It's kind of like with Balak and Balaam went their separate ways. So the enemies never stay together. So one of the ways that this is relevant for today, because I mentioned, you know, this would be like Democrats and Republicans ganging up on somebody, right? Yeah. So you know that person's probably in a good place if both sides are, are against them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's what, bipartisan? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. But we, there's a, a term politically nowadays that they call intersectionality. You ever heard of this? No. Intersectionality. Well, this is an example of intersectionality 2,000 years ago. So uh, a real-world example today would be like, how is it that uh, Ilhan Omar, right, who is a congresswoman, uh, I think from Minnesota, I'm not sure which state she's from, but somewhere up there in the north Midwest, uh, is a Muslim, right? She is pro-Sharia law, all these things, right? Her and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a.k.a. AOC, those two, right? And of course, AOC being a bartender from Brooklyn, right? Uh, and a pro-feminist movement, leftist as left gets, right? Socialist. How do these two become part of the same party and become like besties cohorts on like running what they call, they have this thing with the four of them, the squad, right? How, how does that happen? Because eventually, let's say they were to demolish all their common enemies they would then be turning on each other, clearly because they're not, they're not aligned, right? That's, that's, that's relevant for today, what you brought out. It's right. kind of interesting. So it's the same idea here. They found something, right? And so in, in the real-world example with AOC and Elon Omar, you have uh, a, a group that they both don't like, which is the conservative Republicans, right? The great old white man, Satan. Well, here they see Yeshua, right, as the common enemy. So they're willing to put down all of these common or the, uh, these these issues that they have with each other in order to work together on their common enemy. So their their values intersect, right? Intersectionality, they intersect at hatred for Yeshua or, you know, hatred for the yeah. the great old white Republican Satan, you know. It's interesting, you know, how you brought that out because yeah, the enemies can come together for a common cause, you know. Christian brought out my son uh, that like Russia and the US against Germany, right? So you have the communists the USSR and the United States and the allied forces fighting against Germany, but very quickly, right? As right. soon as that happened, then boom. Oh, yeah. Now there's a, a Cold War. Right? Interesting. It, it is. That, that is interesting, you know. Um, yeah, God's not a socialist, that's for sure. <laughs> now, this is what's interesting, you know. The, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees demanded a sign from heaven. They tried to explain away Yeshua's other miracles as sleight of hand or coincidence or use of evil power, but they believed that only God could do a sign in the sky. That's what they wanted. This, they were sure, would be a feat beyond Yeshua's power. Although Yeshua could have easily impressed them, he refused. He knew that even a miracle in the sky would not convince them he was the Messiah because they had already decided not to believe him. It's kind of like when they brought Yeshua before Herod, you know, he, he didn't say a word. He didn't put on a show. He didn't entertain like Herod wanted. And that's uh, very interesting. See, we don't have to, we don't have to push it. We don't have to push our, um, whatever. Yeah. Our actions, our words. We don't. Have to, we don't have to go to that extent. We say, no, you know what? I'm backing off here. I'm not. I'm not going to give you that. I'm not going to display anything. You know. And so, another thing is that the critics would would come to Yeshua. Yeshua never went to the critics, and that's the lesson we can all learn. Never go to the critics. Let the critics come to you. Um, he goes on to say, uh, Yeshua says, He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. 
O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? Right? Now, the word hypocrites is the Greek word Hippocrates, and it means an actor under an assumed character, stage, or player. Figuratively, a dissembler. It could also mean a pretender. So he's calling them hypocrites. Absolutely. It's doing one thing and, of course, uh, saying another. So, you, you know, know? This, uh, this is another example of why this is relevant for today. Um, kind of like your last you know, statement there and in these verses, uh, there's a, a psychological term called cognitive dissonance. You've heard cognitive dissonance. And this is the idea that despite overwhelming evidence, somebody will choose to believe whatever they want to believe, right? And so, um, you know, they, there's, there's many examples today politically that we can get into. But, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were, were very studied on, you know, the Torah specifically, but also, you know, from the Pharisee standpoint, also the prophets and the Talmud and the Mishnah and all that. So how is it that they miss the Messiah standing in front of them? How is it that they get they miss God in the flesh? Well, because the, the the prophecies are like a mosaic that you have to grab and pull together, and that's why even the enemy Hasatan couldn't figure that out. Agreed. Well, well you know, th- it's their cognitive dissonance, right? It's it's their desire for political power, right? It's it's um, the preconceived notions that they've already created in their mind, and that no one can come in and present evidence to the contrary because it doesn't matter. If they were, they've already decided, they've already made up their mind, so don't even bother. That th- This is so relevant to the Hebrew roots, I can't even describe it to you. Um, it really is. It's relevant to when we're talking to our, our, our you know, mainstream Christian friends, and they're like, you guys are nuts. And we're trying to say, like, no, this is what the Bible says. Right. And it's relevant to the people that, you know, kind of go off the deep end in Hebrew roots, and you're trying to bring them back. Right. And there's no amount of evidence on either side that you can show somebody. Thank God for the Bible. That, oh, man. What if we just had to believe in God? And he didn't give us the word of God. We just had to believe in him. Like, oh, there's a creator. I know that there's a God that created all this, and that's it. You walk away. Well, it'd be, and you have, you have a moral compass. It'd you be know. chaos. You want to do what's right and good and, or whatever. But I'm just saying that, you know, um, that's the thing about Star Trek. You know, that if you're a sci-fi guy, that, you know, they would go to all these different worlds and all these different gods. And it's like right. a buffet. Right, 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 right. But... Um, you know, so so in Matthew sixteen four, Yeshua says, "A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas." And he left them and departed. So he drops the mic. Remember the prophet Jonas. So many people like these Jewish leaders say they want to see a miracle, so that they can believe. Yeah. But Yeshua knew that miracles never convinced the skeptical. Yeshua had been healing, raising people from the dead, and feeding thousands. And still these leaders wanted him to prove himself. Wow. And of course, Yeshua says, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. John 20, verse 29. Uh, by using the sign of Jonas, or Jonah, who was, the inside, who, who was inside a great fish for three days, uh, Yeshua was predicting his death and resurrection. He says, I'll give you a sign, but you're going to have to wait on it. Yeah. You're going to have to wait for it. So that's what happened. He turned around, and he, and he uses the sign of Jonas, of, of him being in the fish for, for three days. Well, so Yeshua they, was predicting his death and resurrection. They were asking for him to make a sign in the heavens, right? And the prophecies that they all knew listed other signs that he had already done, uh, that you listed out here, right? Oh, yeah. That Yeshua had already healed, you know, the right. sick, you know, raised people from the dead, give sight to the blind, make right. the lame walk. That's true. He's already done all these things. So then it's like, you do all these things, and these guys were all present. I mean, there's many examples where you, they, they're there, and they're I even think, mad. I like, think, you did this on the Sabbath. I so. think they even traveled from Jerusalem up to Capernaum, if I wasn't. They do. If I'm not they mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's quite a haul to go check chapter. something out. But the, the thing is, is like, They've already seen all the evidence, right? So now they're coming, well, if you could just do this last piece of evidence. And the answer is no, because guess what? You're not going to believe that evidence either. You know, it's, it's, they've already given you all this. So discuss why your faith is greater if you have not seen but still believe. Mm. So we can go and kind of go ahead a little bit and look at this. Yeah. And here's the question. Who really wants to be a doubting Thomas? Mm-hmm. So that's the 
the moniker that he gets the that's the title that he gets doubting thomas you know um, that's right you know what that's rough you're right because he's a disciple yeah he's because, an apostle. Well, unless i see the nail prints and the scars you know i'm not going to believe you know yeah and he okay. says you have seen yeah. and you have believed blessed right. are those right who have not seen and that's believed. right yeah so so it's kind of like when people ask me well how are you going to have a bt israel or this or that or how are you going to do this restoration we got in the whole house of israel the two states how are you going to do it i believe no you you say by faith by faith i by believe by faith you know i i I can see it in my mind, and that's mm-hmm. what a vision is. Praise and God. then you move towards it, and it comes to fruition. So. So, so with that in mind, the Pharisees said, seeing is believing. But Yeshua that's good. is saying to them, believing is seeing. That's good. Because if you can believe first, right, the Lord blesses that person with faith. All throughout the scriptures, with the sight of what they believed for. The, the fruition of the promise. And, you know, and, and, and also with obedience, you know, like me kicking a stick out of a path because I felt led to grab the stick. I believe that was the unction of the Holy Spirit. And I take that stick and I take it in my apartment. I put it in the corner where I go into my apartment, my front door there. And then sometime later, he says, that's the stick of Ephraim. You're Ephraim. You know, you're returning back to me. It's all obedience. And then he puts the pieces together. See, if we don't open up to the Jewish people to come here and share, how can we go to the next step? How can we get the invitation of them? You know, um, you know in Hebrews 11, which is the faith chapter, it talks about this, about how, um, you know, like with Abraham specifically, that he believed God's promise, but he didn't just believe that God had the intention to do it. Because I think a lot of times people will tell us things, but we know that there's a possibility it won't happen, and not because it's their fault and they didn't have good intentions, but because maybe they're just not able to fulfill it. But Abraham believed not only that God had the intention, but also the power and the authority to do what he said he was going to do. And I think that is a big deal. When you when you can combine all of that together in your in your faith and get in your mind that God has the the desire, the power, and the authority to do what it is that I'm believing for, that's when I think I wonder, really you know, aligns. how many Jews would contest that faith of Abraham? Because why would you kill your own son or sacrifice a human being? Why would you murder your own son in the name of God? I mean, Abraham was about to do it. I know, but this an is an angel what, had to grab him by the hand. But this is what I'm saying, though. It's like, you know, you look at these things and you're like, that's bizarre. Oh, I agree. It is bizarre. There's no doubt about that. But it just goes to show you the sovereignty of God, though, and how powerful and how strong he is. So think about it like this, Ryan. Think I just got a thought, just got a download. Think about this. What if we do Hebrew roots according to Yahweh Mm. and not our way? Amen. And he looks down on us and he smiles. You're saying it's Yahweh or the highway? Yeah, and he's happy. Yeah. Because we're after his own heart. Oh, yeah. So if the Jews are blinded to the Messiah, Jesus, that's fine. That's that's a personal problem. Yeah. That's also a, a circumstance that people have to look at and say, well, everyone has to make a decision for Christ. Right. Whether you're a Jew or a non-Jew. So it's really not our problem. So we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But we can love them where they're at, extend a hand to them, and then see what God's going to do. Yes. Get us in the same room. That's right. You know, and so that's, that's where I'm at on that. So, yeah, um, vision is seeing something. And... Um, it's kind of like the Lord was sharing with me as a, 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 you know, the the prophet stuff, you know, in me. He's like, I've shown this to you, but not to them. Mm. That's why there's a there's a contrast or a friction there, because they don't see what I see. They haven't been shown what I've been shown. Right. So that makes perfect sense it for does. that response on the other side. Yeah. And we don't think about that though. It's kind of like you know the prophet saw the angels. And the servant didn't. Right. And then God opened up his eyes and the servant saw the angels when they're coming after the prophet, remember? Sure. So he was gifted with that, which you know, is what you want. God, show them what you've showed me. But then if he doesn't show them, it's for a reason. Right. That's true. Because something's playing out. Right. So something's in this playing. question, though, why is your faith greater if you have not seen but still believe? You know, imagine how small of a a life and an impact you'll have on the world if you only believe 
when seeing. I know. It's you know what I mean? It's going to be a long day. It, it's, that's going to be tough. I mean, hope, right? You can right? be too late for something, Faith too. is what drives us on. And then when we get to the, the thing that, like the object of our faith, right, or, or the fruition of the promise, our faith is then doubled and tripled, right, once we do see. So I, I feel like it's so much better when you put the faith before the sight instead of the sight before the faith. That's you know, good. But some people live in that small little box, you know? Well, let's move on to Yeshua warns against wrong teaching. So now he's going to go after the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So wrong I'm going to read teaching. verses 5 through 12 All right. of Matthew 16. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. It's all yours, right? Wow. All right. So then what had the disciples forgotten when they came to the other side? Bread. They forgot the bread. It's like when you go to the grocery store for my, my wife or I'll ask her for something. She'll ask me for something. Like, oh, I forgot that. Huh. Where's so then, the bread? So then Yeshua says to them, right? He, he's, what was, okay, so what then, then Yeshua asks them a question. What's the question that Yeshua asks them? In number five right here. Oh, oh. What did Yeshua say to the? Oh, yeah. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Hey, we forgot the bread. Right. And he says, hey. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So he says, this is a, a moment that I could create an object lesson out of this, right? So he wants to express something to like them. Like, it's not a big deal. You forgot the bread. You right. get it. That's real bread. Right. But let me tell you something. Okay. So, um, so he says, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, right? So leaven is a substance. Right. Yeast being, you know, part of those things. Right. Used to lighten bread dough by making it rise. It's also figuratively used uh, to represent anything that permeates and modifies something else, right? So we've, we've right. seen some, some different ways through the Bible and through Scripture that leaven is used. So, right. Um, so then in verse 7 and 8, the disciples, being men, misunderstand what Yeshua is saying. And this, this is what it says in 7 and 8. It says, And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we've taken no bread, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because ye have brought no bread. Right? So, in, so Yeshua makes the statement, take heed, right? And, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He's bringing the subject of bread into And the, they're like, oh, we can't eat the Pharisees' bread, whatever bread they brought. So he's talking about this because we forgot the bread. Well, doesn't it tie into the Lord's Prayer and give us this day our daily bread? So, like, teaching is like bread. Right. I mean, I'm just wondering if we could look at it like that. He's comparing it to, hey, don't digest this. Don't eat this. I don't know. It's just interesting how, you know, I spiritual think, food versus physical I food. I think they misunderstood what he was saying. Yeah. I think they literally are going along the path, right, and... He says, hey, take heed yeah. that you not, that you beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And they're like, oh, he's saying this because we forgot the, oh, we forgot the bread, right? So they realize that as he's saying this, we forgot the bread. Okay, but that's obviously not what he's saying. Right. right? He's not talking about actual bread in this case. It just so happens that they forgot the bread. So Yeshua, Yeshua was simply stating to his disciples that forgetting the bread was not as important as beware of the false Because they thought that they thought the that was a big deal. See, and Sadducees. So verses nine through eleven kind of kind of 
play it out, right? So it says, Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves and the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? So he's saying, I'm not talking about bread, guys. I'm talking about the leaven of the Pharisees. And so I think somewhere else, so not in this, this passage, but in another passage, and I forget where it is, doesn't he say um, that the leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy? I'm pretty sure. There's, there's a lot, the leaven of Herod. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's different examples of, of leaven, too. Right, and leaven puffs up, right? A little right. leaven leaveneth the whole Well, leaven lump. is, yeah, sin. Right. So Yeshua used leaven as an example of how a small amount of deceptive teaching can affect a large group of people. The misleading teachings and wrong priorities of the Pharisees and Sadducees were leading many people astray, right? People were under this yoke of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and what they were teaching. Right. But Yeshua, with this whole hypocrisy idea, had explained to the Pharisees, right, that they were neglecting the weightier matters while doing all these other little things. So there was was error here, and God is in the transition of bringing truth through his Son. So there's error here in, in the teaching, correct. in the religious system. Right. The religious system was corrupt. Yes. It's not saying all Jews are corrupt or it's all corrupt, but, no. but, but at that point in time, the religious institution was corrupt. And, and along with the Roman government being over the Jewish people was a, was a double-edged sword there. No, and, and in Hebrew Cats roots, 22. it would be easy to look and say, hey, this you know, doctrine is corrupt or that doctrine is corrupt, but we, because we're part of that group, don't say, like, the whole thing is is you know, whatever. All these people are bad people. Whereas people take the Pharisees and the examples of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other Jews and the stories in the New Testament, and they use it f- to as fodder for anti-Semitic ideas to say that all Jews are bad. You know what I'm saying? And so it's it's that's as wrong as if we were today to try to paint Christians all with a broad stroke. Brush. Right, yeah, yeah. He's talking about, you know... Um the institution itself, right. the religious system, was corrupt. Absolutely. So, so uh, verse 12, our last verse here says, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. The light bulb goes off, and they understand that he's not talking about don't eat the bread they, that they get provide. It. Right? Doctrine is what you do. Right. And so the word doctrine is the Greek word didache, didache right? and it means instruction, the act or the matter, doctrine hath been taught, right? Yeah. So I was trying to think about this, about because I think you have a quote. Theology is what you believe. What you think, yeah. Right? And, and doctrine what you do. is what you do. Now, some people would not agree with that, but it, it kind of makes sense, you know. Well, Theos. I mean, I'd have to look it up and d- decide, but I like saying that because we believe a lot and we think a lot. Right. But what are we actually doing? Correct. Well, and I think doctrine is the way, right? So when you teach somebody doctrine, it's this is how you apply what you believe. So doctrine is this is what we do, right? So I I agree with that, or at least I understand that we can intellectually read things in context all the time. And it's like everything everything that we offer at Bait to Heal, we want you to do. Mm -hmm. But you might have your own version. You might have another way of doing it. Well, like I but I have to present something to the people to do together. Yes. I have to present it. You know, hey, this is what we're going to do. That right. way you can participate. Correct. I like it. Yep. So in this instance, right? And Yesh- I do it, so I'm not a hypocrite. Yeshua was stating that the doctrine or the instructions of the Pharisees and Sadducees contained errors and for the disciples to beware, right? I mean, the biggest thing we can say is this, and, you know, it's not being disrespectful to the Jews or or Judaism is that they create fences around the commandments that you can't even get to the commandments. And God wants us to do the commandments, not the fences around the commandments. Agreed. So they're trying to protect the commandment. So they create the legalism. Yeah. It makes sense to do that. I mean, but it's wrong. If if the word says to do this, then do this. If it says do that, then do that. We don't need to try to build fences around it. You know, like there's not a lot about how to keep the Sabbath and what to do, what not to do. There's just a few little instructions about, you know, a day of rest and a day that's sanctified, a day that's set apart. Don't light a fire because, like I said, it takes work. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot about the do's and don'ts of Shabbat. That's why people will ask me, well, Pastor Nick, you know, what do you recommend? I said, well, you know, 
it's it's what you want to do, but it's a day that is sanctified and set apart, so it has to be different. It has yeah. to be leading you to holiness or the word or prayer or whatever blessings, you know. Um, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You know, yeah. some people would use you know like fine china and dress up, or some people would have those paper plates, just throw them away. Yes, that you don't have so to do dishes. I had somebody tell me we watch a we watch a family movie on Friday night. You know, and I'm like, oh, that's that's good. It's all about building memories mm-hmm. for your children. Yeah, that this is a day that is sanctified, set apart, and different for sure. So that's where we're at on that. So so you know, I I feel kind of bad because. You know, as far as the Sadducees and the Pharisees, I don't want to disrespect them historically. Sure. I just want to bring out the point that Yeshua came to bring correction. And we got to be careful. Yeah. You know, because we don't want to turn into that. Agreed. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's very easy to do it. And so, but on the other side of that, right? So let's discuss how false teachings can hurt people's lives along with your personal testimony. I just have this, you know, it can lead you astray and bring pain into your life. Uh, It could lead to alienation and destruction. Uh, Lastly, it could also uh, lead to eternal damnation. So there's a lot of uh, different sayings out there, you know, once saved, always saved. Um, My experiences and observation and based on the scriptures, you know, uh, I believe if you're born again, you're born again. You can't be reborn you can't be again. Unborn, right? Unborn. Yeah. I mean, so so the question is, are they even truly saved? Yeah. You know, you have a lot of these worship artists or Christian artists or different people, whether they're ministers renouncing their faith in Christ. I I would say, and and I think it's a strong possibility, they were never saved in the first place. Yeah. You know, when I became born again and got saved, it radically changed my life. I didn't come into some belief system or think about something or read about something. I mean, I had a personal experience with, with Yeshua, with Jesus. Right. So for me, I had a born again experience in March of 92. So, uh, you know, I want to stay on that path. I can't renounce him. I can't go back no matter what he does to me or what happens in my circumstances or whether things go my way or they don't or whatever happens, uh, the decisions that, that, that I have to make or, or do. So I would say that, um, you know, the thing that I would like to tell everyone that's watching and listening is the fact that one of the ways that the Hebrew Roots movement has gone south or gone wrong is they spend too much time in the Torah. And what you have to do, and remember this, the Gospels are very important because Yeshua said, the Holy Spirit will come and bring to your remembrance everything that I said. So he didn't say Torah. That's the danger of this movement. But if we say I interpret the Torah through the Gospels, through Yeshua, you're in a safe place by the Spirit. Agreed. The Spirit of the law, like you were sharing earlier, versus the letter of the law. So I don't want to discredit the Torah. I'm just saying that if you don't know Yeshua's words or his teachings and he's not your rabbi, then you're definitely not his student. Mm. You're in trouble. So that's just something that I've I've learned. And it proven to be true because this last fall, the, the, the father was like, you really need to go into Matthew because my son is a king and you're his subjects and you need to, you need to understand the king and the kingdom versus you know the Torah the gospels there's a, there's a difference there so the thing is once the king interprets the Torah and he reads it to us and shows us it shows us how to respond to the outside world and to the public sector of life and to our families to our jobs to our you know people that we labor with our bosses and so uh, like I said um, especially when it comes to false teaching you know we have to gravitate towards the words of Yeshua because that's when the Holy Spirit will bring it to remembrance. You know, you know I think of two things um, when I think about you know, false teachings and things like that. Um, you know, first off, I want the point to be made that God sometimes allows people to fall into deception. Well, actually, in Thessalonians, he says, I put a deluding spirit on them because they wouldn't receive the right. truth. Well, and I, and, and I think... The low-hanging fruit when somebody's new to the Hebrew roots is like the holidays, right? Like Christmas and Easter and how right. um, they're rooted in pagan idolatry. And people will get caught up in that idea. And while that's a, that's a fact, right, it's pretty empirical. You can't, can't get away from it. Um, right. Easter is called Easter. <laughs> you know, it's the name of a pagan goddess. Ishtar? Yeah. 
So, um, so it's it's a it's difficult to to get away from that. But, um, you know, people start to get angry, right, at, at the at the, what they feel like is a false teaching or a lie. But then you look at the prophecies and you realize that that God allowed this. He took away the feast days and the Sabbath away from the Northern Kingdom. Yeah, and Hosea said, right, it, yeah. he took it away. And so that's part of the punishment. So you can't be mad at the pastor who's celebrating Easter, right? This was passed down from the fathers to the fathers to the fathers. I mean, this has been a 2,000-year lineage of deception that has been pushed down. And, and, it's, and it really truly is about the heart of the matter at that point, because God knows that. God knows that. Right. Right? There's even a psalm. Uh, it's, it's either 80, somewhere in the 80s or 90s. And it says, right, that like if uh, you know you would cast us off to a foreign land, right, and if right. we were to have worshipped after the name of a of a foreign god, right, can't God search that out by the hearts of man? Something along those lines. So it's like that'll blow your theology out of the water, right? right? So I mean, that's some crazy stuff. <laughs> but my point being that um, you know when we discover truth, right, it, the question then is are we now going to be accountable to it? Are we going to cling to it and, and love it for the joy that God has given us? And then through that joy, spread it to others, right? Or are we going to then take our new teachings and like bash people over the head of them? So that's, that's one side of it, right? Is, is the feeling that like you've been lied to or that things have been negative on and affected you. You're talking right? about false teachings. False teachings. The other side of this is within the Hebrew roots, right? Um, the, there's a couple clues that you can find out there of, of is this or is this not a false teaching, right? And we were talking earlier before the podcast about the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. And <clears throat> does that mean that the letter doesn't matter, right? No, it doesn't mean that the letter doesn't matter. Yeshua clearly says that not a jot or a tittle shall pass from the law until all is fulfilled, right? Yeah, and this teaching is on instructions. The Torah doesn't save you. Correct. Like, right? if I do Torah, I'm saved. Well, and, and Paul no. discusses this idea about the letter versus the spirit. But when we talk about the letter versus the spirit, we're talking about the bigger principle. So if you can't align the derivative of the teaching to a higher principle of God, then it's a false teaching. And I'll give you an example. Even when you're right or accurate, even when you're accurate, it doesn't mean you're right. I'll give you an example would be the calendars. Calendars are the most divisive issue, in my opinion, within the Hebrew roots. Even more divisive than the shape of the earth. But the, ca- <laughs> the, the, the one calendar could have some merit. Well, what I'm, I'm just saying that's that. what I'm saying, right. I don't think the calendar is a false teaching, but I think it could be misleading. But hear, but hear me out. The, the false teaching is subtle and hidden underneath, and I'm gonna, yeah. I'll show you. Really? It is. It's, I'm going to uncover it. You're going to uncover it. I'm going to uncover it. it. You'll find it there. <laughs> oh, no. So the false teaching is that you have to be accurate in order to celebrate the feast and do things for the Lord, right? God's not looking. When I firmly believe that when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, right, you're before the Lord, and he's going to lay out before you the deeds of your life, and then he's going to light it on fire, right? And everything that didn't matter is going to be lit up like wood, hay, and stubble. And only the things of eternal impact are going to be left, right? I don't think the conversation is going to be, well, you celebrated Passover on the wrong day. So, sorry. You know, that's a good point. Let, let me ask you this, though. I, I consider this a false teaching. We can get into this because we have some time. But yeah. I want to say this, though. How about this? this? This is, I believe, a false teaching. That you have to be baptized in water in order to go to heaven and to be truly born again. I agree that is a false teaching. So, what I, but that's being taught. Correct. I believe that's a false teaching. Right. And you know, and you can bring out, well, the, the, the thief was on the cross and he wasn't baptized, and Jesus says, you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah. How do you get around that? They say, oh, no, after that, after the cross. Yeah. Well, so, I know where the verses are that they get it from, right? That, you know, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, even then, you're only baptized in the name of Jesus if you're one group, right? Um, grace is what gets us in. Grace is what keeps us in. That's Nothing right. but the grace. That's true. Okay. That, that's good. And so it yeah. is by faith, right, in God's grace of his son being resurrected from the dead, and our faith in that we will be resurrected just like he was. Um, that's what saves us. What about this? Speaking in tongues is of the devil. That's a teaching, <laughs> right? That's a false teaching. Yeah. Speaking in tongues is of the devil. Right. That's well, the devil. So it's funny. Okay, that's a false teaching. So... 
so like in Acts 2, they speak in tongues, and it's translated into the ears of the people. Yeah, because in their it's, own it's, it's personal the Galileans, language. The, right. the disciples, those that were in the upper room, were speaking the language of those that have assembled in the upper room in that part of the Temple Mount. Correct. All right. So, but then when we get to Acts, or not Acts, uh, Corinthians 14, right. yeah. he goes through a whole explanation yeah. of how it's different. How speaking in tongues, you speak to yourself it is, it is language, to yeah. edify the spirit right. when you can't pray. When you don't know what you're supposed to pray, pray right. in the heavenly language. It edifies you. Right. Personal but edification. In, in the public sector, it has to be interpreted. And that in a congregation, that if somebody are, is to publicly speak in tongues, then there should be an right. interpretation, especially for the edification of the non-believer. Right. So that they could see, wow, the spirit is moving in this place. Right. But the most edifying thing is to prophesy. Right. Right. Love. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So only thing I want to, only thing I want to track back to with the calendar thing is this. The calendar issues bring division because if you're on a different calendar, then you can't come together in the same place at the same time to do something for the Lord. Right. And then you'll also miss the Jewish people. So there's a care right calendar. (laughs) There's yeah. So what's the bigger principle that I want to filter this through? Right. The bigger principle is unity. Right. Right. We're called to come together in one mind, in one accord, in one spirit, right? To do the festivals for the Lord, to do Passover, to do Shavuot, to do, you know, Pentecost, to do Tabernacles, Sukkot. We're called to come together to do these things. How do we do that if we're all bickering over the calendar? Because I am, I have, look, I've done a lot of study on the calendars, and I agree. There are, there are things that you can look at in the calendars and be like, oh, this is the right way. Right. But even within that, there's like, a a variety of there's different lunar, brands. there's solar. Well, but even within those two camps, there's arguments over specific dates and specific ways to do things. And when does it start? And do you do it, you know, with, you know, 30, 30, 31, or do you do it all 30s? I mean, like, how do you do it? Right. So that's true. So point being that there's, there's discord right. built into arguing over calendars. Right. But guess what? We've got a calendar that's been going there's even a Shabbat, right? Where it's not, the Shabbat's not based on the weekly Sabbath. It's based on like when the new moon is and then you'd count seven. So again, there's a lot of division that can be made over it. But what God has called us to is not necessarily, I'm not saying being accurate is bad, right? Right. I mean, it's, it's an interesting but subject But if you matter. missed the bigger principle, right. then you're in a false teaching. Yeah. Right? We should be loving and unified, right? And doing something for the Lord and worshiping and doing spiritual exercises. And we should be doing it together in fellowship with other believers. And that's what I mean when I say spirit of the law. Right. Right? Yeshua is like, hey, it's work to pull a donkey out of a ditch, right? Right. But which one of you is not going to do it? If you're not, you're going to let him die there? Like, all Sabbath long, you're going to listen to him just like flounder and die? Yeah, good point. No, you're not. You're going to go pull you the do good. donkey out You do good out on the, the Sabbath. So, anyways, I'm off my high horse now. So what two points can be learned from Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 12? That's it. Verses 1 through 12. What two points can be learned from Matthew? This one comes from my daughter, Christina, and it is have faith without sight. Wow. Have faith without sight. Um, I like that point because uh, how many times do we say to ourselves either overtly or subtly, I'll believe it when I see it. You know? I think it's better to have faith and go for it. Second point is, your decisions can affect the others around you. Your decisions can affect the others around you. So be careful what decisions you make. Your decisions are not just about What is it? Your decisions? Can affect those around you. That's pretty deep. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really good. I've got uh, number one: do not base your faith on just signs and wonders. Aha! I like Maybe you've that. never seen a sign and wonder. Yeah. Do you still have faith? Mm, yeah. Some people have not seen signs and wonders. Yeah. That's number one: do not base your faith on just signs and wonders. Number two: beware of false teachings and study for yourself. Mm, like a Berean. You know, with your first point there, I think I might have said this on last week's podcast with uh, Vince, but uh, Albert Einstein is quoted as saying, there's two ways to live life. The first is as if nothing is a miracle. 
And the second is, is that everything is a mirror. <laughs> That's pretty good. I choose the second. So uh, you want to close this out? That was good. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, God, thank you so much, Lord. We just feel your spirit in this place, God. We thank you that uh, you are with us and you are encouraging us and you are giving us uh, revelations as we study your word, God. And we just thank you for the words of Yeshua that are left here in the book of Matthew, God. And we just pray, God, that we would be given the discernment and the wisdom uh, and the merit, Father, to know the signs of the times as we yearn for your coming, Lord. And we, we yearn for you, Yeshua. We, we want you to come back. Bo, Yeshua, Bo, come, Jesus, come. We just pray for that right now, and we thank you, God. We believe uh, in the sign of Jonah, God. We believe that you spent three days in the heart of the earth, God, and that you were resurrected from the death, Yeshua. And we put our faith that we, too, will someday be resurrected from the dead, or that if we are part of the lucky few, the blessed people that will be alive and remain, uh, that we will be caught up with you in the air, Father. And so we just we, we put our faith in you and in these things that you have promised to us, and we just pray in Jesus' name, in Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. All right, guys. If you want to get a hold of me, you can comment on uh, this video either on YouTube or uh, Facebook or wherever else you're watching. I don't know how where else it goes, but also uh, you can uh, do all kinds of cool stuff on uh, the podcast uh, links and stuff that you're using, whether you're using SoundCloud or Apple Podcast or Google Podcast or Spotify or iHeartRadio, wherever it is. Um, but uh, thank you guys for, for being here with us. Bless you. Um, you can also email me at ryan at topraise.net. You can find resources on our site as well. And uh, have a great week.